for a small amount of your code like for example if you're not if your application doesn't uh, exceed 512 megabyte of memory as well as a couple of one or two uh, cpu that you could actually deploy it um, in different places so um maybe then you know as as always i i start by asking what's your experience and what is the you know what are the challenges that you have experienced or you think you know what are the kind of questions when you think of deployment in the way that the challenge document is described that is that you're thinking so you know what comes to your mind abdul Hamid. hi hi so when I think of deployment, I first uh, started to work with Heroku when it was free back in the days. I think it has been over a year now since the free plan has been dropped. Uh, since then, I moved over to uh, deploying servers, virtual uh, digital ocean droplets, so that the servers could run uh, indefinitely. And also, I could install additional um, I could install additional uh, software onto the server, such as Redis, MongoDB, and all those things, and have them at a single place, and uh, uh, actually connect my front end to that server and serve the different applications I have. So this this is my um, experience deployment. Amazing, great, yeah, exactly. Heroku used to be the de facto. I think now there are a couple, as you said, as you mentioned. Uh, um, yeah, so I think there, for different applications, it used to be Python everywhere for Python and and droplets now. And so, yeah, great, thanks, David. <clears throat> yeah, thank you very much. I have a beginner experience on model deployment, uh, which is uh, like a previous speaker. I am not here with the exact name, but sorry to miss. I'm also working deploys model on Heroku uh, platform, which is we deploy a model on Heroku platform by using uh, Flask uh, for, uh, front end develop. And finally, we save the model and deploy on the web by using Heroku. And finally, the company, and right now, one year ago, we deploy, and I hope one year and six months, uh, company or Heroku company was requiring some kind of initiatives right now, but it's not working right. But uh, for the time being, it's uh, six months uh, free trials. It was working, but it is challenging because of in order to be developed the uh, application, which is using uh, Flask and integrating by Heroku is a little bit, uh, bulky but i'm working uh, as a beginner and i have experience on that thank you thanks thanks david anyone else there you know what are the challenges that they experienced as well you, know, you can mention conceptual as well as technical challenges okay uh, deriva uh, thank you uh, i have uh, worked on many deployments we do have uh, local servers uh, which we have uh, deployed uh, many applications and the websites on the local servers first we have uh, created uh, the virtual machines using the virtualization technologies then uh, using that vms for applications and for databases then we map this uh, local ips to the public ip we bought from internet service providers that's how we deploy our applications Wonderful. Great. Yep. Anyone else? Or even if you know you, you didn't work, but you had some questions, whenever you think about it, what what are the concepts that are challenging to you when in this space, you know? And what 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 are you looking for? What, for example, to work on as what are the technologies that you have heard you would like to know? So more of just what are your wish lists? Yeah. Um, Docker. Okay. And self like cloud. Um, exactly. Okay, 
Great. I think you know I got in okay, yeah, uh Bas Basile. Yeah. Uh hi guys. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Uh okay. So I think I've been looking forward to is in so we had a micro service architecture where I worked and so one thing I'm really looking forward to is to work um, in, uh, in MLOps, there could be a microservice and it could be serving uh, multiple uh, multiple needs, which is it could be serving uh, calls from the front end maybe or back end people or uh, any other. So something that comes to mind is, is working uh, something around there. Yeah, but I don't have many experience when it comes to deployment. Yeah. Okay, great. I think, um, you know, we, so the most important part is to know them, I mean, to wish them. First is, you know, you need to get the problem to really work on that. Sometimes my style is that however you read these things, you may not, you may not know much until you actually you know go and have a problem to solve even just for learning it's not that great but the more you have like needs like you want to deploy your website you want to deploy you know uh, a model you want to show showcase something you want to apply for a job because that job has in azure or in aws you want to really demonstrate you have deployed something that's where you really start getting the hang of it right but also, most of the time, you don't need to know too much detail, but at least some things like, for example, being so comfortable working in the cloud, you know, connecting your, I mean, it's very simple. Sometimes it's an afternoon or less than an afternoon to be able to connect, you know, with SSH, generate your SSH keys, you know, and kind of, and then pass them and share them. Or where do you put, you know, if you are working in Windows, it's different than, for example, if you are working in Linux Mac, and where do you put your keys? Like, you know, how do you generate them? What are the best practices? Things like this, because you're going to be working most of the time, there will be probably somebody that takes care of the, the infrastructure. So in general, this is called infrastructure um, management or infrastructure engineer in that sense. But being familiar where um, to put things like, you know, from the, as a machine learning engineer, as a data engineer, where do you put things and what are the differences in in the security in the you know what they are for example ssh is considered really a high security and how do you store your ssh keys when something doesn't work how do you fix it this everybody should know because this is like the ecosystem wherever you you're not decoupled from your ecosystem that means from the infrastructure and as you go on actually in a smaller companies usually you have to be everything you have to be an ml ops you have to, you know, almost always think of it that you will be wearing different hats um, for different reasons. So, so sometimes for, you know, that you would be a DevOps, which and a, an infrastructure engineer, an MLOps, and, and then a data scientist, and, you know, data engineer, analytics engineer, BI. All of this, you don't have to know too much, but it's important. The distinction becomes important as you as the project grows okay so as the project grows things gets more complex and handling them becomes somebody's real focus real job otherwise you know if you don't want the downtime of some you know like an acceptable downtime for example you have seen our our 10x system we had to down you had to uh, upgrade something in the middle you know how do you upgrade you know so it's kind of things like that this becomes more important that someone else takes care of it because you know, it's become sensitive and sensitive as you, especially if you think of banks or bigger other Google, for example, you don't feel it, but Google has infrastructure engineers that are really, you know, ensuring things work. So they of course depend on technologies. They develop their own technology, for example, Kubernetes and, and others, you know, they support and they kind of also, sometimes they are the contributors, the, the, also the ones that who started actually because they have to deal with Facebook the same you know all of these big companies that you really use their site you know TikTok and others they have infrastructure engineers that really deal with 
that you actually get the service that someone else wrote. And so it's very important to learn the ecosystem. So my 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 part here is I'm going to use the slides, but really you can I'm going to be browsing as well different um, just you know in AWS I'll just open AWS and, and show you in Git in Docker and, and and GitHub Actions, and here this will form the baseline. But then later this afternoon you would have introduction to infrastructure uh, management using Terraform as introduction as well as also Kubernetes. Um, where you deploy your elements like you know dockers so you will have more concepts there it's unfortunately there is one um, in the background noise that's not going so hopefully it will go um so i think you know the, the, the it's it's uh, so the purpose of this is just really to introduce you uh, just to the concepts of cloud computing and management at the beginning and then later things gets uh, more complex but within that you know where i think it's the most important for someone that's going into the cloud the main issues would be you know what are the really there are n you know thousands of systems so i'm just going to actually better share entire screen so that i can move quickly here and there. Um, so you see my screen. So for example, if you go to into um, so the first part is, you know, like anything that you need to have probably an MFA and then that basically um, so that you would normally authenticate yourself, right? And then now when we think of services, there are so much services that are in the cloud that you would have, right? So, you know, you can search more on the, you know, already um, for everything that you, you can write, you know, for every later, for example, um, Amazon will have, will have so much, you know, services that are that that have like, for example, EC2 or security hub, security, you know, there are so much, where do you start, right? So where are, um, what do, what, you know, what's, how do you organize for yourself? Like, you know, what are the organization principle of um, like these different, so I'm just going to all services so that you can, you can see. So these are basically Amazon's just for one, even if I open analytics, then it has many other services within that. Within the blockchain, you know, within a compute, for example, you have AppRunner, Batch, EC2. You may hear Lambda, LightSail, you know, in a database, you might have, again, many other services, DynamoDB, ElasticCache, you know, Amazon RDS, TimeStream, you know, everything that in memory if you go just to memory alone or in quantum technologies for example you may have some and then um for front end and end user computers you know, and developers tools like this is basically how you interact as a developer you, you, so the, the most important part here what i want to show is like there are so much how do you start you know where, where are the, the common places that you start um and Normally, that's where in I would I would really first for me just there are only two things most of the time, and then applications on top of that. But that's where whether you use um, you know in-house infrastructure or cloud infrastructure, the two things you want are computing and storage, right? So you have to know for every cloud you go to get familiar, you just have to know what is its computing, and then you know classification of computing in hierarchies sometimes the bare metal which is basically really you do you have 100 percent control to like basically it's managed like for example serverless when if you heard about serverless serverless basically means you don't even manage the server nor let alone the infrastructure you only just put applications and hopefully you know it will run at scale uh, but it has its own cost it's about you know, cost optimization as well as control, cost and control 
Um, and then storage, different clouds have their own storage. For example, in AWS, the most known are S3, which is basically object storage that is very cheaper and big. And, and then there are EBS volumes, just like hard disks, as well as also RAMs, as well as also like some uh, file systems, distributed file systems like AFS. And um, so these are the type of things that you want to know. Again, within the storage, some are very fast, some are very intended for high performance, some are cost effective. And, and, and then within the computing, you also structure everything according to like, you know, do you want one CPU, two CPU? How does that cloud actually makes uh, this distinction? Normally in, in AWS, for example, you will have, you know, with different names, T, T lines or M lines, T3, T2, or, you know, T large, TX large, T, you know, how they organize their computing because everybody has different needs. So, in, so you have to understand basically that computing and storage and their different levels. But the other very, 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 very important as you get, even just you manage a very small, you need to understand the user management. So this is called identity IAM um, uh, management. So that's like basically where the lots of concepts comes there. And I think that's the most, the first place you should be at least familiar with because everything at first, you want just the compute and the storage and you want to start. And the really detail starts like, how do you manage different people? You know, what are like, you know, how do you commission things? It gets so complex. So user management, service and tasks and permission and roles, I would really emphasize them, you know, to have a certain idea, okay? So, so this is in general, um, that's what happens, like that everything else is decomposed into actual real space and cyberspace. And the real space, you know, so I'm not going to detail, you have the objects at hand and you operate them. Um, and, you know, when you have them, they have them. But the cyberspace is where a lot more of just the interactions happens and it is what is the cloud, right? So it's the internet plus the compute infrastructure, including your phone, your computer, and the, con you know, what we call the clients usually. To and then what actually operates both the kind of the mirrors, information mirrors, where they handle information so that it's closer to you, the distributors, the containers, and, you know, all of that. Uh, okay, so, um, just one moment. Unfortunately, I have to go, Like, um, but I will just try to finish this one and maybe continue later in the afternoon. So I, for, I have only two minutes, unfortunately, but uh, I will continue and you will also get uh, this part. Sorry for that. I forgot that I have another scheduled meeting that I had to do. Um, that was from my part. So then, um, you know, and that's how then is decomposed. If you have heard anything before, I think you probably have heard them in this hierarchy. Infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, and software as a service. And, you know, you can continue if you want. You can give anything as a service. But most of them, they, they lie as just basically means infrastructure as a service, the main players, you know, Azure, Microsoft, you know, and AWS. Uh, AWS, um, as well as Google Cloud and many others. But then there are also platforms that you can actually commission and then softwares like Google Drive and everything that you know that you use, you know, Facebook, if you you, you use it as event poster, whatever, you can use it as, as a service as well. But anything that has, as, um, you know, the services are softwares are basically uh, in that level. So that basically your control, if you are, here, like on infrastructure, you have more control. And I would describe it. I think I, you know, I'm unfortunately I have to go. Um, so we will continue this one. And again, apologies for that. Um, so I will continue later with together with the other tutorial.
Okay. Thanks, guys, for understanding and sorry for the interruption and the inconvenience. In the meantime, I the, the slides will be shared. So later we will just continue. Thanks. Thanks, guys.